Hi students, welcome in chemistry classes. I am Priyanka Jain and you are watching the videos of analytical chemistry. Okay, so in this lecture we are studying atomic absorption spectroscopy. Okay, one of the very important topics in the analytical chemistry. Okay, several times questions are asked from this topic. What type of questions are asked that we will see in our later video. Firstly, we are understanding in this lecture about the principle what is the instrumentation how the system works what are the applications okay so let's start actually atomic absorption spectroscopy is a very common technique for detecting the metals and metalloids in the sample okay so if in the sample metals present or metalloids are present then their traces even can be detected with the help of atomic absorption spectroscopy it is a very reliable and simple to use technique Next, it can analyze over 70 elements and with the help of this technique, we can ever measure the concentration of metals in the sample. It means if we have to identify the amount of the metal that is present in the sample, that can also be detected with the atomic absorption spectroscopy. So actually, this is both the used for quantitative as well as for the qualitative analysis, right? Let's come to the principle of this technique. As from the name, what is the principle? As from the name, you can understand this is atomic absorption spectroscopy. It means it is a one type of the spectroscopic technique. But we are studying it here in the analytical chemistry because we are using it from the point of view of analysis. As from the name, you can understand atomic absorption. It means absorption is being happened with the atoms atoms are absorbing the radiation of a particular wavelength okay in this technique what is happening free atoms are generated in the atomizer okay actually we are taking a sample solution okay and then this comes to the atomizer that you will understand in both the instrumentation technique so in atomizer free atoms are generated now what happens these atoms are in the ground state okay this is in the ground state and by absorbing the radiation of a particular wavelength okay if it is exposed to a radiation of the particular wavelength it will go to the excited state this is called the absorption of the radiation and it is absorbing the radiation at a particular frequency just we have to identify that particular frequency on which the absorption is happening actually these atoms absorb uv and visible light and makes transition from lower level to higher electronic levels okay so if we have identified the amount of the absorption then we can also find out the concentration of that particular analyte okay so this is the basic principle now understand its instrumentation okay let's come to its instrumentation first of all first part of the instrumentation is light source very important point actually we are using hollow cathode lamp as the light source Okay, the radiation is being emitted from the hollow cathode lamp, SCL. It is also known as SCL, hollow cathode lamp. Okay, so actually, see here, what is its structure? Actually, here is a glass tube like this. Okay, this is a sealed glass tube. Inside this tube, there is a hollow cathode. This is the hollow cathode. Okay, and there is a tungsten anode. Tungsten wire is acting as the anode. This is our anode and this is hollow cathode. The cathode is made up of the element to be detected. It means suppose if we want to identify any element sodium. Suppose we have to detect the sodium, traces of sodium we want to identify. Then this cathode will be made up of sodium. Okay. So for every element there is a unique lamp which must be used for that analysis. Okay, now this both cathode and anode are sealed in this glass tube. This is a sealed glass tube in which this system is fit. Okay, inside this tube there is the inert gas field. This is the inert gas that is filled inside this tube. This gas may be argon. Okay, any inert gas we can take here. So this is the whole structure of hollow cathode lamp. Now comes to the next instrumentation that is nebulizer. Nebulizer how it is used and what is its function actually first of all you have seen hollow cathode lamp that function is to provide radiation of a particular wavelength okay we should know the function of each or every part of the instrument it provides radiation of particular wavelength 
Now comes to nebulizer. Why it is used and what is its function? Actually, we are taking the sample solution. Our sample is present in the solution, and we want to see it in the atomic state. So first of all, it is converted to fine aerosol. So the sample solution will go to nebulizer, and here it is converted to fine aerosol. Okay, it means tiny droplets. So it is now converted to fine aerosol, and now here. in this fine aerosol we are mixing the mixture of fuel and oxidants why we are mixing fuel and oxidants because actually we have to introduce this aerosol in the flame okay we will have to vaporize it and for this purpose we need fuels and oxidants so here in the nebulizers the sample solution is converted to fine aerosol and here the fuel and oxidants are mixed to it the third part of the instrumentation is the atomizer as from the name you can understand atomizer means a system that is working for atomization it means it is converting the molecules to atoms in nebulizer we have converted the sample solution in the fine aerosol now in this aerosol there are molecules present so first of all these molecules are separated and then these molecules are dissociated to atoms this is done in the atomizer okay actually in atomizer this solution is introduced to a high temperature flame or graphite furnace so on the basis of this there are generally basically there are different types of the atomizers but basically fundamentally there are two basic types of the atomizers one is flame atomizer in flame atomizer as from the name here is flame okay we are creating here a flame and the sample that is in the form of aerosol is now introduced to flame okay and here in this there is a mixture of oxidants and fuel gas in most of the cases we are taking air acetylene mixture okay air and acetylene flame is used because it will in make a temperature near 3000 to 3200 degrees centigrade in different cases different types of flames are used as according to the temperature that we need sometimes we use nitrous oxide acetylene flame and different types of the flames can also be used okay this is nitrous oxide and acetylene flame so this can also be used okay different types of flames can be used in the flame atomizer second type of the atomizer may be graphite furnace atomizer in graphite furnace atomizer this is most widely used atomizer okay in graphite furnace atomizer actually we are using a graphite coated furnace to vaporize the sample so on the basis of this name this is called at graphite furnace atomizer here the sample are deposited in a small graphite coated tube which is then heated to vaporize and atomize the sample okay now comes to the next part of the instrumentation the next thing is the monochromator monochromator is a very important part of the atomic absorption spectrometer actually it is used to separate out all of the thousand lines actually when we are getting the radiations that are coming out from the flame it will consist of thousands of lines why because in the sample there are several types of elements present okay and they are absorbing at the different wavelength okay so now we want only our element of interest so what is the function of monochromator it will select the radiation of specific wavelength that we need from thousands of lines okay and this wavelength is then sent to the detector so the basic function of the monochromator is to select a specific wavelength of light which is being absorbed by the sample and to exclude all other wavelengths okay the selection of a specific light allows the determination of selected element in the presence of others okay now the next part of the instrument is the detector actually in most general cases we are using photo multiplier tube we are using photo multiplier tubes as the detectors what is the function of detector detector will convert this light signal to the electrical signals okay these light signals when comes to the detector these are converted to the electrical signals proportional to the light intensity now one of the important thing is here the calibration curve what is it calibration curve 
Actually, the calibration curve is used to determine the unknown concentration of element in the solution. The instrument is calibrated using several solutions of the known concentration. Actually, we are plotting here a graph between the absorbance and the concentration. Okay, on one side we are plotting absorbance and on the other side we are plotting the concentration then we are getting a straight line. This whole thing is done with the help of processor. We does not need to do anything. The processor will do all the things and give you the plot. Okay, give you the curve. So, what we are doing, we are plotting several curves with the several solutions of the known concentration. It is called the calibration. Okay, and with this help of this, we are getting several calibration curves. Now, we are running our sample of unknown concentration in the spectrometer. So, we are getting a curve of the unknown concentration. Now, what we have to do? We have to compare this calibration curves with the curve of the unknown concentration so that we can identify which particular element is present here. Okay, and by the curve, with the help of this curve, we can also find out the amount of this particular element, right? Alright, now see the working, how this atomic absorption spectrometer works. This is the basic instrumentation of the atomic absorption spectrometer. I have made here a rough diagram. If you want to see a convenient diagram, a full flesh diagram, you can see that in the books, okay? Just here, I have made the diagram to explain you. This is the hollow cathode lamp and it is acting as the radiation source. As I have told you in this cathode, there is a glass tube. Okay. And this is the hollow cathode. Okay. This is the hollow cathode and there is a tungsten anode. So, first of all, what is done? A high voltage is created between this anode and cathode. As a result of this high voltage, what will happen? This inert gas that is present here will get ionized. Okay, and as it ionizes, what will happen? It will hit this cathode. This cathode is made up of a particular element of interest. Suppose we have to identify the sodium. Then this cathode is made up of sodium. Okay, so what happens when this gas hit this cathode? This process is called sputtering. Okay, as a result of this sputtering, this cathode will release several of the sodium atoms. Okay. Suppose just we are taking the sodium. Okay, so sodium will get here free and this sodium will now absorb the radiation. Okay, so what happens? This will come from the ground state to the excited state. Now this excitation state have a finite time. So after some time it will again go to its ground state and it will emit the radiation and Every element will emit the radiation of a fixed wavelength. Suppose we are taking the sodium, then it will emit the radiation of 5, 8, 9 nanometer. So, this is the radiation that is being emitted from this. Okay. Here, suppose we are taking the sodium, then the radiation of 5, 8, 9 nanometer is being emitted from this hollow cathode lamp. Okay. Next thing, see here. Okay. The next part of the instrumentation is nebulizer. This is the nebulizer. Okay, this is nebulizer. So, what happens? Here is the sample solution. Our sample is present in the form of solution. This solution is being served up by the nebulizer. Okay, by this pipe, this solution is coming to here. This nebulizer is sucking up this solution and converting it to the fine aerosol. Okay, now this aerosol is mixed with the fuel and oxygens and then it comes to this atomizer. This is our atomizer. Okay, so this fine aerosol with the fuel and oxidants comes to atomizers. Now, there are four processes happens. Understand this very carefully because question has been asked on this question, on this whole order. Okay, so first of all, what process happens? First of all, in the atomizer, here in atomizer, you can see this is the flame. Okay, there is flame, so high temperature is created. As a result of this high temperature, the, subs the first of all, solvent will evaporate okay this process of evaporation is called desolvation in the second process what happens the sample converts to the gaseous form our sample was in the solution form now this is converted to the gaseous form this process is called volatilization after volatilization we are getting the gaseous form and then the next process is this gaseous form contains molecules 
So as a result of high temperature, these molecules get dissociated into atoms. This process of dissociation of molecules into atoms will be called dissociation. And after dissociation, what we are getting? We are getting our atoms in the ground state. Okay. But there will be the absorption. Okay. These atoms are present in the ground state. And there are the radiations. We have seen here that the radiation is coming to the flame. So, by absorbing this radiation, these atoms will go to the excited state. So, finally, as a result of this whole process in atomizer, the solution is converted to atoms in the excited state. Okay. Now, our atoms has absorbed the energy, the rest of the energy. This is called the transmitted light. The transmitted light is now passed through the monochromator. Okay. This is monochromator. Monochromator do one function. As from the name you can understand monochromator. It means it will separate out the wavelengths of the light. It will select only a particular wavelength that is being absorbed by the sample elements is now seen by this monochromator. It will select only that particular wavelength and excludes all other radiations. Okay. And this particular wavelength is now sent to detector. Detector is a photomultiplier tube. Here, this light signal is now converted to electrical signal and then it is forwarded to the processor. Our processor will now make a curve between the absorbance and the concentration. So, we are getting a curve. Okay. First of all, the curves are made between the known solutions. Okay. That is called calibration. We are getting calibration curves and then we run our sample of the unknown component. Okay. So, after, con after comparing them, we can find out easily which particular element is present. Okay. So, this is whole working of the atomic absorption spectrometer. Now, comes to its applications. Atomic absorption spectroscopy is one of the most widely used technique for the determination of metals at trace levels in the solution. Okay. If only the traces of the so metals are present in the solution, that can ever we find out with the help of atomic absorption spectroscopy. Okay. So, this technique is widely used for metal analysis in the environmental samples. Environmental samples means in air, in water, in soil, any other thing, in biological fluids or in the tissues, these metals can be analyzed with the help of atomic absorption spectroscopy. So, this is all about the atomic absorption spectroscopy. Okay, I have told you all the things that you need. Okay, and which type of questions are asked here? That we will see in our next lecture. Okay, so if you are liking these lectures, if you want to see more lectures of this type or any other comment, if you want to do, you can do the comment. If you are liking these videos, please share this with all other students. Okay, and like the channel and subscribe our channel. Thank you.